Well, hey, CrossCart fans. So today is all about adjustability, uh, making this so that any driver can drive it. Now, I kind of built this for my wife and my daughter uh, who love outdoor recreations, but maybe don't want the clutch, don't want the shifting, don't want the horsepower. <laughs> so this is an easy gas and brake version, as you already know, but driver adjustability, I still want to drive it because 20 horsepower on one of these, still who to drive. So I'm going to show you how I was able to do this. Is that comfy? Nice. How's the pedals? Nice. All right, hop out. Now, my daughter's nine years old, just for reference. She's been driving these since she was seven. <laughs> So what I did is I got an off-road booster seat and all I do is I take the pads out and I plop this in. All right, hop on in there. Now this seat is made by 50 Caliber Racing. It's on the steep side, but it is safety equipment. It's not just a normal booster seat. It is a specialized off-road booster seat. I think it's for razors, but it fits in these racing seats well. And you can see how it pops her up, lets her eye line go over the steering wheel. She still has full control of the pedals. She can reach all the switches. And the harnesses still work extremely well because she's sitting in a racing seat in a racing seat. So now, let's take it from nine years old to 41 years old. So now I'm in it and I'm comfortably in it. This is huge. So I've had requests to make a specific kids VF1, but I was thinking about it and to downsize everything, I mean, she's still growing. So she's gonna grow out of it if I build a small one. This one, she can grow into the entire lifespan of this cart. And on top of that, the wide track width, the correct wheelbase, she can take this anywhere that I'm going with my buggies incredibly more safe than a, a kid's cart. So this is a huge win to let anybody get behind the wheels of these. And here's how I did it. All right, so I've been busy. I've been doing adjustable pedals, adjustable seat, I put this dash in. Now, I just followed my own video to make the dash, so I didn't make another one. Uh, if you want to know how to make a dash like this, just uh, look through the channel. All the questions you have are on the channel. I've well documented all these builds to the point where I use them when I'm redoing something I've already done. Uh, I did wire these lights up. They're just wired to the switch and a battery. Too easy. Uh, I made a harness so they, everything's removable. Let's get a look at these. Oh yeah, tons of light coming from those. Should be fun. Uh, still probably put a light bar on the front just because I like the way it looks. And this is what we did. Now it's probably hard to see because everything is just metal colored in here, but I've got a brake, I've got the gas pedal. Now I hooked the master cylinder to a bracket I made for the brake pedal. And I hooked the throttle connection to something that also slides with it. Now this piece is a spring-loaded pin. Um, I used it for the doors on the race cart. And all you do is pull that pin and there are two slides with, with bolts in them with nylon washers um, because it's sliding. And all I did was cut holes every inch, inch and a half or so so that there are multiple positions and that pin just locks into them. Now, the inch and a half square tubing left over from my jig is the carrier and then this bracket with the one inch bar is the actual pedal set. Now, this foot rest goes with the pedals so you always have the same foot position. It's kind of a slick design. I like it, it's worked out really, really, really well. Um, one thing that the video doesn't show very well is the throttle stop. 
Now this takes pressure off of the cable. If you don't have a throttle stop and you're using your carburetor or your linkage as your throttle stop, you have a chance of stretching or breaking this cable. So you wanna line your throttle stop up with the stopping point of your carburetor or whatever. This can also be used as a governor if you've got a kid driving it. I leave it off because my daughter is very good at driving. I hope this shows it well enough. Let me know in the comments if it does or not. Um, I didn't film the building of it other than the time lapse. We put the seat sliders in here and it raised the seat just a little bit too tall. My head sits just below these bars and I don't like that. So today is going to be all about maximum depth of the seat. Now it's pretty simple. All I'm going to do is take this rear bar and I'm going to make another one and I'm going to mount it forward up here and I'm going to get rid of this midterm bar. I'm going to flip this angle iron and then I'm going to recess the seat slider and the bracket all below this outboard rail so it sits down in there rather than on top of anything that should give us three to four inches of head clearance up here which is exactly what we're looking for All right, so I made my front crossbar, cross member, whatever you want to call it. I just recut that one because it was wider than the, the floor spread. And I cut these two pieces of angle iron. I used two inch by two inch, but that's all I had in my shop. So I'm gonna make it work. Uh, then I looked to reference my measurements and the first bolt was four inches back from this back edge. So all I gotta do now is find where the center line of my bolts need to be to let this seat slide. See if I need to cut any of this off for clearance for the seat. I have adjustment to pull this in a little bit, but I wanna get this measurement first before I take that bolt loose. So, it's pretty easy. Just measuring four inches. And you can see I labeled this back and front so I don't make two of the same side accidentally. Um, so I've got that marked. I know the distance between my bolts is uh, 12 and 5 eighths. So this is all just going to be pretty easy. Now I haven't welded anything because it's all going to get welded together at the same time, probably with the seat in there. So I know everything's tight, square, secured, and awesome.
So here's the seat brackets. You can see it's just the angle iron, the seat bracket itself, the slider, and there's plenty of clearance on the inside. There's a little bit of clearance on the outside and it's all tight. So now we just take our left and right sides, slide them in here. I'll probably get something to support the bottom of that uh, with a bar and the jack just to hold it flat. I'll get the seat in, get it mounted, position it left to right as I want it, tack it, and it's done. Start the time lapse. All right, so I was fighting with this seat to get it in and those notches between that bar and I was struggling with the adjustment lever because that was hitting the bar, which I'm fine with because I just bent it up to clear it. But while I was monkeying around with that, it came loose to that front bar. And I was trying to figure out how to keep that tilt on the seat that I like. Because piloting one of these, if you're tilted back, it feels like a cockpit. It feels like you're flying a jet. So I kind of wanted to keep that and I was trying to figure out how to maximize the tilt on these. And then that happened. This came above there. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. I think that is pretty cool. Uh, get this out, just trim this top piece so there's no sharp edges. And we're still losing a ton of altitude on the back. And this bar was mounted right here, so even the front is at least two inches lower. And you can see that gave us a ton of headroom. The back of my head sits right on that NRG. So you can see I'm going to be well below the bars now with a slider. Yes! Alright, so I've, I've made my end brackets all nice. There's both sides there. But now I want to show you this. We can work on the seat slider. See how it's angled incorrectly. It's not grabbing both of these pins. This is a chance to get that exactly how we want it without doing it from under the cart. So I'm gonna get that bent up and get on. There we go. Bracket is bent correctly. See how it's lined up. It's not all angled funny. You can grab it easily. All right, let's get it mounted. All right, let's check the fit. Oh my gosh. It feels so much more roomier. Yeah, my eye line is directly between the top of the wheel and the bars. That is absolutely perfect. Feels like there's more room there, like I'm in the cage, not even with it. Let's see how the seat works. Oh my God. That is a lot of adjustability. Between that and the pedals, this is ridiculous. <laughs> nice. Oh, anybody could drive this. This is freaking sweet. So you guys know I'm building this for the next Mini Mayhem or next Invitational I go to because it's hard to let you guys drive the 100 horsepower ones because they're nuts. All of them are nuts. The 50 horsepower ones, they're all nuts. This one, not so nuts. Fun, but not nuts. So, we'll get this all done. Hopefully you'll get a chance to get behind the wheel of a VF1. Thanks for watching. See you next time.